Thank you for joining me live from the grooming table, people. I'm so glad to see you. Today is a big one for us. You've waited a while, haven't you? Waited a while for what? Well, tonight is the big reveal of my new dog grooming salon. And I'm gonna explain so many things about the build of this dog grooming salon. And you're gonna to wanna to hear it, trust me. I planned this dog grooming salon set up for 20 years. Are you kidding me? Yes, I did. Now I'm bringing you in to see it and I'm so excited. I want you guys to avoid pitfalls with your dog grooming setup. So I'm sharing this as well as I know you're excited to see the new space that we are all gonna come together in for all my videos, all my learning tutorials, it's all gonna happen here. So you're gonna wanna know what is this place all about? What, how is it set up? I've made mistakes through the years setting up my dog grooming salon because I was new and I didn't know what I needed. I didn't know that the slightest little things could make the biggest of differences. And that's what I'm gonna help you with. I'm gonna explain some of those things to you today, guys. I planned this grooming salon set up for 20 years in my head. When grooming a dog like any profession, you need your, pro your, your productivity. Your productivity relies heavily on your knowledge, of course, your tool choice, and your workspace setup. Your productivity really relies on that. So I'm gonna help you with all that today, guys. I realized that after years of grooming, what, what would I change if I had to do it all over again? Well, guess what? I had to do it all over again. <laughs> And, and I, you know, as a professional groomer, I had to build a new space after 20 years. And that's what we are, we've found ourselves landed right here tonight in that new space together. And I'm so glad you guys are coming in from all over the place. And I'm so happy to see you. Thank you all for joining us tonight. So I am very excited to show you this tonight, um, but I did have the opportunity to relocate and build a brand new dog grooming salon, especially because I wanted to make it a perfect grooming space, okay? So knowing I had to do this, I really put a lot of thought into it. And I wanted it to be the perfect space for me and the dogs that I groom so that we can be as comfortable, as happy as possible, because that is the first thing that sets up your dog grooming session, guys, is how are you feeling? How are you feeling about where you're at? You know, how's the dog feeling, especially because if the dog isn't feeling good, that, that filters right into the grooming session for you too. So tonight in this video, I am gonna walk you through my new grooming salon and explain the thought process behind building my new dog grooming space. I'm gonna explain that to you. I will also share links with you. They're linked below in the description of things that I'm gonna show you and things that I chose, things that you could consider. I'm gonna show you many links, many different things of choices that I made and added to my grooming area and why. And if you've already created a dog grooming area or you're thinking of making a space, for grooming, whether it's your pet or for grooming professionally, you may be very interested in hearing some of the simple upgrades that I made to improve my salon. And maybe there'll be a simple little upgrade that would improve your salon too. So you're gonna wanna see this. So I hope you enjoy this video, guys. I'm so excited. I'm so glad you're here. And I thank you all for touring my amazing new grooming salon with me. This space is part of me. There's so much of me in this space. Well, there's at least five foot, four inches of me in this space and about 118 pounds. <laughs> in my dreams, I'm not 118 pounds. <laughs> I'm not saying what I weigh, so don't ask me. <laughs> but uh, there is so much of me in this. As Alex and I built this house, I knew I had to build a new space for grooming and I wanted to make it better. I wanted, there was many things that I knew I was struggling with in my old salon, but sometimes upgrading while you're grooming is very hard because you really got to shut down your operations to make modifications, especially if they're messy ones. So we tend to just keep chugging along, but I got to think out and well plan this setup um, with all my favorite things like my, my awesome dog grooming tub, it came along 
to, thanks to the help of some dear friends and my husband, they got all this heavy equipment in here for me and it wasn't easy. <laughs> it wasn't, but they did it. If you follow me on Instagram, you've seen it. You know what I'm talking about. So um, getting this set up, I had months to plan it. So I really, I made notes. I researched little things, little inexpensive things. I researched to find out where to get them and how to add them into this space to make my area very well lit, um, very easy to get around. So in other words, my grooming table is centrally located in this grooming space and I can easily do a 360 around this grooming table without tripping over anything. I've got some things to share with you about that. Um, without, um, you know, bumping into things, um, I put a whole wall cabinet in this salon and you're going to see it. Um, with a granite countertop. I'm going to tell you why I chose the type of cabinet that I did, uh, what my choices were, and why I chose what I did. And I learned that after grooming for 20 years in another salon. I knew, wow, if I could, I'll tell you. But uh, so I never thought I would really be building another grooming salon. I never really did. I thought I probably would be where I was and the other house and we were very happy there i thought i would be there forever really i did and um i knew that there were some changes i'd like to make some changes i could make but there were other changes that would have been very difficult to make due to you know existing structure so we had i didn't have to worry about that in this space this space that we're in now was an empty shell and let me show you the dimensions. Let me show you that right now. Um, this was the plan. This was this is part of the plan of our house that we built, which is where I am now. And this was the lower level in the basement. And I popped out there that says finished room. So when we built the house, we had them finish it to it to an extent. We had the builder and the electrician and the plumber, you know, put in you know, the structure, the walls, the doors, the insulation, all those things. And the electrician put in some really nice recessed lights for me. We had another contractor come in and do a drop ceiling. So we have access to all that stuff up there. And uh, we put in a lot of lights. I knew that was one thing. And I'll get to that in a little bit, guys, was lights. Lighting is so important when you're grooming. So I went overboard on that and, and I got exactly what I need but I knew that through grooming past experience. I knew that I needed more lights, better lights, lights that wouldn't cast shadows so much. I was dealing with a lot of that at my other place. So um, we did that. Uh, we also knew about the plumbing. We knew we had to have plumbing in here. It had to tie into the main um, exit of the exit, what is it, uh, sewer, water, whatever, going out of the house. We knew it had to tie into that, so we had all that put in to the floors and everything as they were being poured, they poured concrete. So this was the original plan right here. You can see that my salon is basically 12 foot 8 inches by 15, is it? Uh, 15 inches 7 foot deep. And then of course 12 foot eight again on the other side so you can see i do not have a huge space and guess what you don't need one unless you're grooming a lot of dogs unless you're going to have a lot of dogs in and out of your grooming salon you do need more space than this but i didn't so this is why we chose this so there's the first thing the first part and i've kind of prepared you to show you the size of my grooming salon so now as i walk you through it and show you all the individual parts of my grooming salon and why I wanted them you know that I'm only dealing with like a 13 by 16 room so it is it's almost a square it's a little more rectangular but it's not huge so keep that in mind because your space may not be huge either or the space that you're trying to create for grooming your own pets may not be very big it doesn't have to be but there's some things that you're going to want and I'm going to share that with you and we're going to start right now are you ready so the first thing when you walk into my shop this is coming into the door so that is the cabinet wall that i explained to you guys right those cabinets are closed cabinets this i learned the hard way i had a lot of open shelving 
in my other grooming salon and I loved it. I had all my stuff. I could see all my stuff. I felt so comfortable. But it was constantly caked with hair, uh, getting dirty. Grooming salons are very messy. We use forced air dryers, right guys? The forced air dryer blows everything all around your shop and it sticks to everything. So that was the first thing that I knew I wanted to build, I didn't want to have a lot of furniture hogging up my space, keeping me from being able to move around my small grooming area. So I was like that whole back wall, which is what 12 foot, eight inches, is a whole row of cabinets. I got two tall floor to ceiling pantry cabinets on each side, as you can see. And I'll show you those. We're gonna go deeper into these pictures here in a minute. And they're floor to ceiling, but they're closed. Nothing can get in those cabinets. Hint, dog hair. <laughs> no dog hair getting in there. The only person getting in those cabinets is me. <laughs> so they're gonna stay cleaner for me. It's gonna be a cleaner environment. I didn't have to go with the granite granite top. Granite granite top. I didn't have to go with the granite countertop. But I figured I was gonna splurge. I was gonna spend the money. I know it's gonna last me forever as long as I want it to. It's very clean. It's easy to clean and it looks freaking fantastic. Those counters and cabinets match, um, somewhat match our counters and cabinets in the kitchen of our house. So that kind of, that's why I went with the white. I really like the white. And we have black countertops upstairs on some of our counters. I really like the contrast. So I chose to bring it on down here into the grooming salon. So that is the cabinet. That's the first thing I wanted to show you. And that is when you enter my grooming salon. This is what you see. Of course, you see my table there. Now this is the back view. So now I'm standing back at one of those pantries. Okay, it's looking out. You can see the door that you come into. And you can see it is just a square, guys. It doesn't have to be huge. This space is perfectly set up. So I centrally located my table in the middle of my dog grooming room that is kind of the focal point of this whole room that the table i'm sitting at right now that is it right there it is right dead center in the in the room but ultimately another big thing about the way i positioned that table it was not so i could easily do a 360 around it moving around 360 degrees you know with no obstructions that was one reason another reason is look where it is in, in relevance to my dog grooming tub so if I have a larger dog, obviously that table lowers down to approximately about, I think 14 inches from the floor. And I can swivel out my ramp there on my dog grooming tub. And for those of you who wanna know what it is, it's a TriStar Vet tub, it's fantastic. I can swivel that out and basically walk the dogs directly, especially the bigger ones. The little ones I'll carry. But walk those big guys directly right out of that tub, down the ramp, and onto my grooming table. And then I can raise the table from there after I secure them nicely on the table. It's perfect. But positioning of your table is so important, guys. Give it a lot of thought. And this might be something that right now your little wheels are turning. You may say, hmm, I'm gonna try to position my table slightly different. Maybe that, you know, maybe I can make it a little easier for my bigger dogs or for, you know, for myself, whatever. So think about the position of your table. That's one thing that I wanted to share with you in, in showing you this picture, is that position of the table I thought out. <laughs> you wouldn't think it's such a big deal. I thought about this and thought about this and thought about this, and it all came back to, hey, dead center of the room. This is a dog grooming salon. That's where the, all the magic happens, on that table, Put it dead center in the room and stop questioning it, Amy. That's what I told myself. And I listened to me that time. So there it is. I absolutely love it. There's some more things I'm going to show you about that table. I did get, uh, somebody asked me what kind of table that is. The grooming arm on this table, it's a therapeutic table. It's made, it's called a Viper, V-I-P-E-R. And I am absolutely positive. I can't find anywhere that they are no longer in production. So I'm sorry to announce that. I'll probably have this table the rest of my life. It's excellent. So it not only goes up and down easily and, and it's electric, but it also, the grooming arm itself is electric. <laughs> it, it, it's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. So I apologize to those of you who can't get it, but I have it. 
<laughs> and I love it. So this is uh, the other view in the back of my salon. So if you're standing at the other pantry cabinet, this is what you see. This gives you an idea, guys, of the depth of my salon. It's not real big, not at all. It's just big enough and it's perfect. So all the way against that wall is where I, I wanted my tub and I wanted it positioned in a way that I could still possibly have a cabinet or a desk right beside it. Now it's not a desk for me to work on right on, but I'll tell you what I call that little desk. And I'll tell you what guys, that little desk is phenomenal. I love it. It actually folds down flat against the wall if you don't want it open. So I call it my bathing prep station. That's what it is. I have another closer picture of it I'm going to show you in a minute. That bathing prep station is where my towels are. If I'm going to froth some shampoo or conditioner, I can do that right there on that table. My ear cleaning solution, my cotton balls, um, that type of stuff. Anything that I would be doing in the tub, I can set it all up right there on what I call my bathing prep station. And I love it. I absolutely love it. So that little desk, I think it's like $40, $45. It is so versatile. I mean, it'd be great even in a bedroom for a college student or a, or you if you study and read a lot. And then you can fold it down flat against the wall. It's, it's really cool. So now I want to show you my lighting. Uh, so I know that's kind of a boring picture, but I wanted to show you that I have six recessed lights I'm positioned in the ceiling tiles up there and they are on a dimmer which is kind of nice on it when I'm grooming I don't dim them but sometimes I'll be in here I have that you can see the TV on the wall I will have a movie on I'll be sitting here doing some paperwork or, or, or brainstorming often I brainstorm for video ideas right here in my grooming salon because it gives me the most inspiration right so sometimes I'll dim down the lights I'll put I'll put either a movie on or music or just a fireplace <laughs> on the TV um, and just be in here. And I love this space and I love to be in it. So I like the fact that I put the, the dimmer on those lights, which is an easy thing to change. If you do have lights and your ceiling guys, you can easily have a dimmer put on that. Your husband can probably do it or you can too. Or if you are the husband, you can do it. <laughs> but the lighting is important that I have some other alternatives though for lighting and I still have extra lighting in here some of it is for filming purposes and live streaming I have these two little you can see that one little light there on the side of my table I have two of those well I do use them they're on me right now but I also use them when I'm grooming just the other day I was grooming my mom's little schnauzer Grace and she's black she has a black coat. Sean, how you doing? We groomed Grace the other day. She looks beautiful, of course. But uh, I have trouble seeing her nails because she has black feet and she has black nails, black hair. So you wouldn't believe the difference. You just scoot one of those little LED lights right there at the angle of where you're working and everything is lit up. I could see everything I needed to see. So I use them actually for grooming too, guys. There are some times where I need like a lot of light um, and, and they're great and they're cheap and they're linked in the description below. Um, there's a set of two of them and I love them. So they're LED, they'll last a long time. I wanted to point that out, but so I, I didn't forget to tell you guys. The next thing here, this is my tub and my prep station, my little prep desk. You can see it a little better there. And my tub is just so cozy in that corner. It's out of the way, but it's perfectly located in relevance to my grooming table, which it, it just was the perfect place. The first thing that was placed in this grooming salon was the tub. And that was placed back in, I believe, like September or October. It was a while ago. That tub's been sitting here for a long time by itself. Um, so everything else went around it, but I knew I wanted it kind of in the corner so I could do something beside it, whether it's a cabinet or a prep station. Um, I knew I wanted that. So I love this setup, having that little bathing prep station. If you don't have a bathing prep station, guys, and you do have space for it, really consider it. It's so nice to have all your things right there. It's just so convenient. And of course, you can see I have a clock above my grooming 
my bathing prep station. The reason I have a face clock and not a digital clock, you guys know me. You know, any of you, do, do any of you have, I'm going to ask you a question. Wait, I'm going to lose my space here. Do any of you have my complete guide to grooming a dog? It's a nine-page PDF. It's fantastic. I created it. I made it. I did everything, worked on that. That is my full grooming system. That is my full, full um, list of procedures broken down into categories to help keep you not skipping steps, but keep you on track in your grooming, but also to make grooming attainable by breaking it into three categories. And anyway, a round face clock like I just showed you is absolutely very important to have on the wall if you're grooming because that face clock, the hands of time, end up becoming a pie chart for depending on what time we're at. It's our time frame. I should be done bathing this dog. He should be on the table now. Now I should be done brushing, bathing, brushing, drying, and the dog should now be trimmed. So from this part of the clock to here is all clipper work and scissor finish work. So I always look at my round face clock, always have over the years. If I had a digital clock in here, it would throw off my whole grooming sessions because I am always keeping on track by looking at that clock and seeing where I'm at in, in that category of the groom. It, it's great. I did a video on that. You guys, I hope you know and I hope you have it about breaking your grooming into categories. And I also created an awesome full, um, it's a paid product, it's $9.99. And I do have a link in the description below to my learning center that's where you will find it if you don't have it already but it's the complete guide to grooming a dog in like 90 minutes i think a small dog in 90 minutes but it's a complete guide to grooming a dog successfully that's what it is and it's wonderful so if you don't have that you will need it and you also need to buy yourself a round clock with the numbers and the hands of time on it because that's going to be your new system so anyway back to it this is a, a above view kind of of my tub so you can see the risers i know you guys can't often see that so i thought i would show you but that's an above view um, obviously you can see my prima bathing system right there fits perfectly i have two primas that is the encore model um, because right now i'm only grooming a dog at a time pretty much i don't groom five dogs a day anymore so i don't really need my big salon model for now depending on if i host a grooming party i'll break out the big guy or if i do a neighborhood pet wash in my driveway i'll break out the big prima at which i may do that and if i do i'll bring you along for that ride but um i have my encore system sitting here it's perfect and um, the encore model bathing system i'm talking about a bathing system here guys for those of you who don't know the prima encore versus the prima salon model perform exactly the same. What I'm saying is the results, the performance are exactly the same. It's just that the Encore model is more made for a mobile groomer, especially where space is an issue, or somebody who doesn't have room for the bigger salon model or doesn't need to groom five dogs, six dogs in a row, bam, 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 bam. So the Prima Encore model is perfect for that. But you can see my little bathing prep station there. You know, anything that you need to brush your dog's teeth, you can get all those things right there. If you've got to mix up some shampoo and conditioner, that bathing prep station is perfect for, for you know, pouring out your conditioner from the gallon and putting it into your little mixing bottle and blah, blah, blah. So I just really, really want you guys to consider a bathing prep station. It's fantastic. This is another view of it straight on. So, like I said, it folds down against the wall. It is so cool. It is just the cutest little thing. And above that, on my tub, you can see I have my um, Prima Dilution chart, which is just kind of a cheat sheet to get you in a ballpark of uh, how you want to dilute, how you need to dilute your shampoo and conditioner. So, I pretty much have it all down to a science, but I keep that there if I ever need to reference it. I have my... Um, Prima 
dilution chart suggestion. It's a suggestion. You can push your dilution a little harder if you want to, but it's your suggested dilution chart. And it's nice to have it right there in the bathing area. That's why it's there. So this is a closer up view of um, what I do here, what's on the bathing prep station. So I got this cool little container. It shares Q-tips and cotton balls or whatever you want. It could share little finger um, toothbrushing, little finger toothbrushes. You could put whatever you want. I really loved it. I got it off of Amazon. I did link it for you below. It's very inexpensive and it's so handy and cute. So that's where I keep my cotton balls and hair can't get in there, you know, if I'm de-shedding a big dog or whatever and Q-tips. Now you never go down into a dog's ear with a Q-tip, but I often will go around the little nooks and crannies on the inside of that ear, you know, those little nooks and crannies that dogs have in their ears and just wipe away debris after I've put ear cleansing solution on the area. So I do need Q-tips when I'm cleaning dog's ears, but I do not go inside their ear with a Q-tip. Never, never, never. You don't want to do any damage to the inside of your dog's ear. It's a very sensitive area. So there's my little frothing machine. If I want to froth up some conditioner or shampoo, it's handy. That's a rechargeable one, USB. I think I did forget to link that, but that's because I assume all of you already have it. Because we already went through that little frothing machine about two years ago and everybody loved it. I think you all got it. But if you don't, you can get it on Amazon. Um, just It's actually like a smoothie maker, okay? A, a portable USB chargeable smoothie maker. If you type that in Amazon, you can find yourself a little frothing machine. And I have a video on my channel that shows you how to froth shampoo and conditioner if you don't know. So my toothbrushing supplies I would bring over and, and put right here on the prep station, the bathing prep station if I was going to be working with a dog and oftentimes I do brush their teeth. And I have a video on that too. You guys have probably seen that. So that's what's on the station there. Here's a close-up of the little cutie patootie. Isn't it cute? I love it. I was like, that is perfect for me and my little prep station. So that's my little cotton ball Q-tip little container. And it's all in one, so you don't have to worry about having two containers that you know, you're knocking around. It's all in one. You just lift the lid and you take whichever side you want to take from. And then, and then I have a little hemostat on there because often I will put cotton in the ear, inside of the ear of a dog when I'm bathing them just to protect water so water doesn't get in there. So I kind of use a Q-tip to gently pull it back out when I'm done. Or not a Q-tip, a hemostat. And of course, that is my favorite ear cleaner. You guys know me. You know me. The Bark to Basics, for those of you who ask me, and I know you, all, you ask me this a lot, guys, what's your favorite dog, daily dog, not you wouldn't do it daily, but just everyday ear cleansing solution. My very favorite is this Bark to Basics ear cleaner. It is absolutely wonderful. I've been using it for years and years and years. I have used many other brands and I did like them too, but I like this one the best. It is my favorite. So for those of you that are asking or want to know, I just answered that for you so you don't have to ask me. And this little station is, is part of my tub. So this is a little caddy that was a, an option. I could get that with my tub, a little stainless steel caddy that hooks onto the top there where I'm working. If I need to get a comb, if I need to get a little flea comb to remove eye boogers, it's there. If I need a little bit of help de-shedding with brushes and I have a safe, non-sharp de-shedding tool there to kind of ease out some of that thick undercoat on our big heavy breeds. Uh, I also have my face wash shampoo right there because I do use face wash shampoo on the, when I wash any dog's face. That's made for pets and it's made to be safe around the eyes. But of course you want to avoid getting anything inside directly into your dog's eyes, okay? So that is the, that's the petology um, puppy faces. I really do like that. And you know I also like the Tropiclean Spa Facial. Those are my two favorites. And the little doohickey on the left of my caddy there is one of those alpha dog um, suction clamps. That if you, if you don't have a way to keep your dog in the tub, that is amazing. This is the alpha dog, uh, I don't know what they call it. It's a hitch, but it's made for, it's made mainly for, for the tub and you can hook 
your dog's leash to that, keep them from jumping up on you. The reason I have it in my tub, because I have, you know, I have a bar on my tub. Let me see. Well, where's my tub? That was number 10. Okay. Um, you can see the bar. So I can move my grooming lead and hook at different places on my tub. So I really don't need it. But the reason I do need that alpha dog thing at some time, that thing, sometimes I have dogs that want to rear up on me all the time and get me really, really wet. And this then I can hook at a lower spot in the tub that keeps them from being able to lunge up in the air and just some dogs get crazy in the tub, you know, so it really helps. So that's what that is. And there is my Prima bathing system, as I told you before, right there, nicely secured on the floor beside me, just easy peasy. And it's just a per perfect spot for it. It's out of my way. It's easy for me to fill up because I have to add water to the tank, the big white tank there. So my, it needs to be close to my grooming tub so I can use the water supply for my grooming tub. So that's why it sits right there for me and it's great. And this is something I wanted to tell you guys. So I have a dehumidifier in my salon and it runs quite often. I also have heat down here, but in the winter and the summer, the summer it's really gonna have a lot of humidity in this salon because it is completely underground. So anything underground is gonna hold moisture um, in the air. It's just the way it is. And I'll tell you a reason for needing a dehumidifier is if you have high humidity in your grooming salon, it is going to take you forever to dry your dogs, believe it or not. This is true. So I run this little guy, but I found a fantastic little, I think it's $70 for a small room. It's linked in the description. It's a little smaller, not a heavy duty. This is a couple hundred dollar dehumidifier. You wouldn't need this even i wouldn't need this in this space but i already had it so i'm like i'm using it so i wasn't going to go buy another one but i already had it that's why i'm using it it's fantastic but uh, i linked one in the description below that you can get it's about 70 dollars, and it will really keep the humidity out of your grooming space you know even a mobile grooming unit boy the humidity is so so bad in mobile grooming units and you can get these little space dehumidifiers that, that are small that will definitely take some of the humidity out of the air. And I'm telling you guys, it will affect your dry time if there is a huge amount of humidity in the room and the air of the room that you're grooming in. So consider adding that little dehumidifier. You will be amazed. This is a floor view. Now there's a reason why I'm down here on the floor <laughs> and I brought you with me. Well, first of all, and I'm going to show you this up close a little better. You, you see my cord to my grooming table? Well, because remember I said, I want my grooming table right in the middle of the room. Okay. Well, it plugs in. So it's going to have, the cord's going to have to stretch, stretch across the floor. This little cord protector, um, what do they call them? It's a, it's a cord cover, but the cord, you can fit two cords inside of this. If they're not huge, thick cords, like the cord on my grooming table is very thick. I could still fit two in there. If your cords aren't super thick, like if they were your clipper cords, you could fit several cords. And it has a little groove on the underside of it that keeps them right in place so they don't move. So this is to keep me from tripping over my cords. It's fantastic. It comes in different colors depending on what color your floor is. I did link it for you below. I figured that would definitely be something maybe some of you might be interested in. If you've got cords across the floor, you may really want to pick one of these up. I think it was like 15, 16 bucks. Ha! It's great. And you can trim it if you don't need such a long one. You can cut it. But it's fantastic. But also I, I have you down here on the floor because I want you to see that my dryer is right there at the end and underneath my grooming table so I'm not tripping over it. And my dryer also plugs into, I have a surge protector and uh, about five plugs on my grooming table itself, right under the table part of it. So my dryer is plugged into that. And I can reach into the tub with this dryer if I need to because of where I located it. 
So if I needed to pre-de-shed a dog, you know, like I, I just bathed a big Bernice Mountain dog, dry, toweled them off. Now I want to get some of that water off of them while they're still in the tub before I bring them up on the table. Now I can easily access that dryer there too. And another thing you'll see in this picture that's very important is shock absorbing floor mats. Go get them. I linked some for you. Very cool. Very inexpensive. Very important. If your feet, your legs are hurting anytime, anything, but it prevents that. You need, underneath this floor you see, is a concrete floor. It's a very hard floor, just like standing on concrete. So having, having uh, anti-shock absorbing mats like this, guys, is very important where you stand the most. So I have one in front of my tub, and I also have one in front of my table where I stand to groom. So now I want to show you the mirror that is directly across the room from my grooming table. That is one mirror. I'm going to have two. The other one isn't here yet because they can't get it into the basement due to the muddy conditions of the yard. <laughs> it's coming whenever they can bring it. But, and I'll show you where that's going. But having mirrors across the room from you, directly across, is so helpful, guys, because you can be grooming your dog, keep your hands on your dog, and just peer into that mirror and see how your groom is shaping up. Having mirrors on the opposite side of your grooming table is so, so beneficial, guys, and that's why I wanted to share this picture with you. So consider that, and that's a very inexpensive add-on to your grooming salon that you will be very happy you did add into your grooming space, is mirrors directly across from your grooming area. So you can check out the profile, the outline of the dog you're grooming without having to step back. You know, you, you, you're seeing it from about a five foot distance, which is perfect. So that's why that's there. I will show you real quick, let me back up. I'm gonna show you where the other mirror is gonna go. All right, let's go here, no, right there. All right, let me get back here. So you see the back wall in between the my cabinets, my two pantry cabinets, that whole wall is going to be a mirror. And it, and it is ideal for looking at your dog while you're working. Um, it, is, it also is going to open up the space. So there again, remember I told you I have a small room. It's like a 13 by 15, 13 by 16. Having that full mirror there is really going to open up the space. If you didn't want to purchase a full wall mirror like that, because that's a custom mirror that I have coming, custom made to fit in that space. You could simply just put, you know, three mirrors and butt them up together, but it really, really helps. So that is coming. Um, you'll see that when it gets here, when it, they have to come in through the basement here. They have to walk all the way around the outside of the house because the house was only finished the middle of December. They couldn't seed the grass in October as it was originally planned. So we have mud, you know, I mean, when it's frozen, it's fine, but we've had warmer weather and we had a lot of snow and all that's melting and it's now muddy. So they you can't walk it in, it's too dangerous. They have to wait until the weather's nicer. And there's two double doors that go out of the basement and they'll walk it directly in, directly right into the grooming salon. So they can't make the turn to bring it from the upstairs down the stairs because it's such a big mirror. It's gonna be worth waiting for. <laughs> I can't wait. All right, so let's keep moving on here. Where were we? I don't want to. I don't want to forget anything. Well, we weren't there. We were about here. We were at the table mirror. Okay. So explain to you about the benefit of mirrors, guys. Go ahead and add some into your grooming space. You'll be so thankful. This is in my grooming table. So what's in the drawer? I have one drawer in my grooming table. Many of you have hydraulic or electric tables, and if you do, then you probably certainly have a drawer in your grooming table. So what is ideal typically to put in that drawer? Well, I'll tell you over the years, I've had a lot of things in that drawer. I've kept shears, which I have to be careful to keep them in their cases so they don't bang into each other because it damages the shears. And I quickly determined I didn't like fondling 
fumbling around getting my shears out of the cases when I was grooming. So I was like, no, I don't want to keep my shears here. And then for a while, I was like, well, I'll put bows in there. You know, when I do a bow on a dog or anything. Well, I, not all dogs get bows. So that was kind of a waste of, of some space there. Um, and then I would, I always kind of kept, you see a screwdriver sitting there, guys? That's a flat head. That is there because I've showed you in one of my recent videos, occasionally on our detachable blade clippers, the blade lever, the blade release, flips itself back and you can't open it. Well, you, you're going to need a flat head to just pop it open. And that's why that's there because that happens sometimes when we're scurrying around. We shut the, the blade release lever on our detachable blade clipper. I have a nail trimmer in there because I always trim the nails immediately following the bath. So as soon as they get up on the table, we go for nails. So I have that in there. I have a hemostat if I need to do any ear plucking. That's right there for me. I have um, my blade brushes to clean the hair out of my clipper blades, which I have to unpack my blades periodically throughout one grooming session. You guys have all learned this in that series of three videos I just put out recently. They were very informative. I have my steptic powder there, that little white container that has steptic powder. If I quick a nail, I'm ready. I'm ready to take care of it. It's right there for me in the drawer. Um, I also have vet wrap. So if, if I nick a dog's paw pad or something, it happens sometimes, just even the littlest nick, I like to put some skin works on it. And I'll show you that in a minute or triple antibiotic cream and just to soothe it because it'll feel like a paper cut. And I'll put some of that on. I'll put a little vet wrap on it for a little bit. And then when mom comes, take the vet wrap off and say, uh, you know, I kind of did a little 20 minute healing process here, speed up the healing, but just be careful. You know, she has a little nick in her paw. It's, you know, not anything that's bleeding, but it could be irritated. So, you know, tell the pet owner to keep an eye. So that's why I have vet wrap there. You never know when you're gonna need it. Things happen, guys. And I also have Band-Aids because I cut myself all the time with my own shears, all the time. So whatever shears I'm using, I'm always, my fingers are the ones that are getting in the way. So I'd rather cut me than the dog, but I get a little paper cut nicks all the time. Sometimes I'll need to put a Band-Aid on one, so that's why I keep those in there. Then I don't have to worry about having a dog on the table and ha, ah, I need a Band-Aid. It's right here for me. So those are the things that I thoughtfully planned out and decided to put in my dog grooming drawer at my grooming table. Those are the things that are right here with me at all times. So now we're gonna take a look at this. So on this side of my grooming table, I have what's kind of like a groomer's helper um, clamp. This one I made myself. I got the parts off of Amazon. Um, you can get all kinds of groomer anchors for your table, this is what you would anchor your dog's loop to to keep them from rearing up on you at the t on the table. So they're still attached to the grooming arm, normally secured there, but you can do that second hook under their jaw, you know, if you're using the groomer's helper grooming loop, which I know you all are because I told you to. And that has the extra hook that you can hook another lead to and it pulls down away from their trachea, but it also keeps them from jumping up and lunging and changes the behavior for the grooming session. So I have that there, but on that hook, I have all this space. I put all of my grooming leads right there. So no matter what grooming lead I want, they're right there at my table. They're all hooked right onto that little hitch. So if you don't have a hitch like that, you could add a hook and you could just hook them all on there and it's convenient to have them all right there for you because there on the grooming table is where you're gonna need them. So there you can see another view of that. Um, you can see my floor mat too, right in front of my grooming table where I stand most of the time. It's very important to have those mats. But you'll see that big fluffy, what looks like a big fluffy grooming loop. Basically, that's just a grooming loop with like, it's the things that go over your seat belts, those little sheepskin cover things that go over your seat belt so it doesn't dig into your shoulder. And what I use that for, sometimes people often ask me, do you use belly bands for dogs? And I typically do not because they tend to really press on the circulation of the dog. 
under there. And sometimes if you're dealing with a senior dog or an older dog, which is often when you would need a belly band, um, you, you could really be interfering with their blood flow. So I use that as a belly band. So it's, it's got some more cushion. It's just more cushion. It's not going to be so tight against, you know, their blood flow. That's what that is. And that's when I would use it. And I don't use it often. I don't have to, but it's there when I need it right at my table, which is very important. So here's a top view of what that looks like, guys. I know you probably are like, I want to see that up close. So that is my grooming, what would be a grooming arm hitch, but my grooming arm, you can't hitch anything to because it's massive. It's that therapeutic table goes up and down. The grooming arm's electric. I can't add a hitch to my grooming arm. So this is what I would do if I needed to. And then you can see how I just have all my loops, you know, hooked to it. And then you can see my dryer right there sitting beside my grooming table underneath, out of the way, but ready. It's right there for me. It's plugged into my grooming table itself, so there's no cord coming across. And that's where I keep my dryer. It's, it's all right there. And then there's Gus, who's posing for you. He says, look at me, look at me. <laughs> Here is another close-up view of that cord cover that is so, so handy. I am just, <laughs> I mean, it's the simplest things that make us happy, right? I was really impressed with how secure it lays flat on the floor. It smashes the cord flat on the floor and it's got a little bit of an arc to it. So it, ha it can accommodate for the cord in the middle and it flattens right down to the floor. And I'm just loving it because other than that, I had a cord running across the floor, which is dangerous. Um, it's a trip hazard. You know, I could trip and rip the cord out of my grooming table and then be devastated. Um, so this is just great. I love it. And here is an up close, up close of my mat. I want you guys to have them. You can see the one in front of my grooming table and my grooming tub. And um, they really make a big difference. So if your feet are hurting you when you're grooming, guys, you really could just get, get a mat. They are not expensive. I have linked them for you in the description below. They're wonderful. And there's another... I'm so proud of my little cord cover. I must show you 18 pictures. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys, but it's so cool. Okay, so there's that again. Okay, let's move on now. Um, I wanted to show you. Well, get down there. There, that's what I wanted to show you. I wanted to show you the electric surge protector um, electric supply that is attached to my table. So I can plug like seven things in there. And I have my dryer. You can see where the dryer cord comes up around the leg of the table. It's the hydraulic part of the table and is plugged into there. So it's well out of the way, but it's it's handy for me. It's right there. So I don't know if you have, if your dog grooming table does not have um, a plug, the surge protector plug on it, you can add it to it. You can mechanically add that to it and it's not a big deal. So consider that. I have another one to show you here. I have another use for a surge protector in a minute is coming up. So you may want to think about that. And there again is, is, is all those things, how they're out of my way. But you can see how my dryer stand, you can see the feet of my dryer stand there. I can swivel that all the way around wherever I need it to be. Because of where I placed my grooming table, it's really important to think about where you're placing your table so that you have more mobility and more free will to move around with tools and equipment when you're grooming. And there's the dryer under the table and there's another picture of that cool little cord cover. <laughs> I snuck another one in for He was, he's always with me. So if I'm down here setting things up, taking pictures, he's just sitting there watching me. That's that's my Gus. He's such a good boy. And uh, there's my dryer right there under the table out of the way. It's, it's absolutely perfect. Here is another cabinet. So I only have two cabinets. I have my wall cabinet and I have this cabinet. This is directly behind me as I speak right now. The, the TV is above it. But I call this my workstation cabinet. That's what I call this. And here, again, notice it is completely enclosed. This is a completely closed cabinet, so no hair can get in it. That's one big thing that I learned from my other salon. Uh, I had a lot of shelves, a lot of things on shelves, and just 
constant hair and cleaning and mess, mess, mess. So closed cabinets if possible, guys. It will keep the hair off your tools. It will make clean up a breeze. So once on my workstation, which is directly behind my grooming table where I stand, I have the things that I'm gonna go for quite often. Um, so my favorite essential items. Like you can see I have the Raptor, I have uh, the Raptor clipper there. Well, there's a reason why that Raptor is there. I'm gonna share it with you in a minute. It's not because he's better than all my other clippers. He is a great clipper, but that's not why he's there. I'll tell you why he's there. And then I have, well, let me show you a close up. So here we're getting closer. You can see my little dehumidifiers right there too, which is, is a handy spot for it. Um, so that is a close up of the cabinet. But here I have, this shear rack is awesome. I got it from Groomer's Choice. I have a link in the description below guys for Groomer's Choice and I can give you a code. I think it's GoGroomer24. It's, it's written, it's listed in the description. Um, Groomer's Choice sells pretty much everything you're seeing here today. All the products, all the tools, all the stuff. They may, <laughs> they have these awesome little shear racks. They were so inexpensive and such a good thing to have. And so these are the shears that I use most other than my straight shear, which is out for sharpening. <laughs> so he's not there, but my curved shear and my blender is there. Um, the, the beautiful gold ones, those are the sapphire shears. Those are my shears, they're my shear line. But I have them right here at my workstation. So they're very handy for me. And obviously these shear holders are nice because we know we don't want our shears to touch. They, the metal can clank against each other and cause some issues. So this is just such a nice way. I've always wanted to store my shears this way. I just never did it. <laughs> so I decided to do it now that I was doing this again. And I'll keep my, I have this little, basically that little mat that you see with the flowers on it. That is just a waterproof placemat. You can get the cutest little waterproof placemats at your Dollar General or Dollar Store guys to change with the season for a buck. You know, but it's nice because when I'm cleaning my blades or I lay my blades there back and forth when I'm using them, you know, on one grooming session, you know, your hair drops off of them and stuff. Well, you can simply just, just take that over to the tub and rinse it off. It's so simple. So that's why I have a couple different of these plastic placemats wherever you're going to be laying your dirty kind of tools when you're working because it's easy then to just take that mat and go clean it off when you're done. I have cool care there. Obviously I have blade oil. I have um, alcohol spray, which is a sanitizer for my shears and any guard combs or anything I'm working with at the moment. I have my rag where I can clean up my blades after I oil them. It's right there. So this is what I'm considering my workstation, remember? And also in that drawer, I keep all of my bows. Remember I told you earlier? My bows, my bandanas, um, any little embellishments for the dogs that I'm grooming that I may need, it's right there. I can just turn around, open that drawer, and still have a hand on the dog and pick something out for him, send him home looking all good and awesome. So that's what I put in that drawer. The other drawer's just got a few things in it. I, I don't have all of my things put away yet. Most of it is, not all of it. So then on one side of this workstation, what I'm calling my workstation, is some things that I will go for often on every groom, um, like uh, finishing silk and finish. That's a nature specialty product, I love it. Just add a sheen on the dog when I'm done. And I static spray, there's two different kinds. One is uh, I Davis, which I love, and I static spray. So when you're combing your dog and they, the comb you know, makes the static and then flyaways, you, you just missed a little bit of this, comb it through, and those static, static and flyaways go away. And that's the same with this other anti-static spray that's in the white and orange bottle that you can buy from Groomer's Choice. It's very inexpensive, but it's such a nice little handy spray to have if you're dealing with some flyaways, you're trying to get a nice straight ear and scissor that round fluffy ear on your dog, but the hair keeps flying away when you're combing it. Just spritz in there, just a little bit of anti-static spray. They're wonderful. So that's on one side, and then on the other side are, are more essential things that I go for all the time. Obviously the colognes, which is the last thing I would do for a groom, is, is spray the dog with a choice of 
beautiful smelling cologne. These are mostly eye groom. There's a petals and tails product there that I love to finish the dogs with. And the Skin Works is something everybody should have, not only for the dogs, but for yourself. Remember I was talking to you about nicking my fingers a lot when I'm grooming? I put this on it right away and put a Band-Aid on if I need to, and it just calms the skin immediately. So it's wonderful to have if you nick yourself or if a dog gets a little irritation from a sanitary trim, put some Skin Works on a cotton ball and rub that all over that area and calm that down immediately for the dog. If you're ever grooming a dog and you see some red, the skin is turning red, it's irritated, whether it's, it, whether it's in front of the ears or in the sanitary areas or paw pads, that means if it's turning red, it's getting really irritated and sore. So immediately get some Skin Works on it. And Skin Works you can get from Groomer's Choice. You have to have this on hand, guys. It's an amazing product. I think it's 11, 12 bucks. You gotta have it. So as I said, there's a link for Groomer's Choice below. You can use my code and save 10% on orders over a certain amount. It's either 50 or $100. If you spend that much, then you can um, use, then I think you can use my code, something like that, yeah. And then I have the, this is a love, you see that Rosy Rose CBD Balm? That is a Petals and Tails product too. That is, does the exact same thing as Skin Works. It is amazing. I've used it on myself. I've used it on the dogs. It's wonderful. Very soothing if anything is irritated. So that's why those things are right up front and center on the top of my workstation, because I may need them. So those are the things I chose to put on top. And then behind that, you can see I have a, a TV, which it's not so much for me. It's more for you guys. So when I'm making full videos, this is a live stream. I don't, I call the live streams live streams and videos videos. They're all videos, I get it, but this is a live stream. When I'm making videos, if I'm referring to a product, I can pull it up on the TV and pan over and say, this is what I'm talking about. Or I can put um, a video on there to run in the background. I can put helpful links and reminders to run across the TV screen. Like, hey, don't forget, Amy has a beautiful shear line called Sapphire Shears that are linked in the description below. If you're looking for the perfect set of shears as a beginner pet groomer or a pet groomer, you should go check them out. Yeah, I can put all that stuff up there. So. <laughs> I can put my logo up there to show behind in my videos, you know, if I'm working along and my logo will be up there. So it, it's really super cool to have that TV. It is a fire TV, uh, Amazon fire TV. So where you use those fire sticks, it has already got that built in and it was very affordable. I think it was um, a $400 TV, 300 or $400. It's really cool. So there again, see, that's some of the things I'm, I can throw on there to show you, or it can be in the background of my videos. And there's another shot of that mirror. I wanted to make sure you guys knew that that is important to have that mirror on the opposite, behind the grooming table that I'm working from so I can see what I'm, I can take a look at my work and not have to move away from the dog at all. And there's a little photo bomber, <laughs> that's Gus. He had to get in there, didn't he? So that's just in front, in between my, that's just to show you the distance between my table and the workstation that's right behind me. And you can see my hair vac system on the wall there. So uh, I have another picture of that coming up too. Well, there's another shot looking down as to what's under my table and not in the way of my feet, which is really awesome. Other than a nice mat to stand on. And there's a view again of straight back with all those cabinets, which I'm getting ready to take you inside of those cabinets in a minute and show you what I chose to put in there. They're still not full, um, but I still have things to put away. So we'll get there. That was also a shot of my hair vac system there. I think I have another picture of that. I'm going to show you in a minute. But I, So my hair vac system there hanging on the wall looks like a shop vac on the right. That you can use when you're clipping and I have if you guys watch my videos you see me use it um, it kind of you can adjust the airflow and it kind of pulls the hair up as you're clipping 
and takes the hair away. So you don't have any hair to, that you're breathing in. It's not all over the floor. Another benefit to the hair back system is it actually keeps your blades cool at all times. Any metal detachable blade, any and all metal detachable blades are going to get hot. I've explained that in many videos and I explained it in a recent video that I uploaded a couple days ago about clipper blades. All detachable blades will get hot because they're made of metal. It's not because there's anything wrong with the blades. And you want them made of metal so they last a while. Well, forever. But so your hair vac system will help keep your blades cool when you're grooming along, which is another benefit of it. And then it has an optional housekeeping hose. So I can reach, I can just plug that housekeeping hose in and vacuum my shop when it's dirty, when it gets hair all over it or whatever. So the hair back system has multiple purposes. So here I have two end pantries and I have two cap or three cabinets in the middle with three drawers. So what's inside of them? Well, when we open up the drawers, I have one drawer that is all about clipper blades. As you can see, this first one towards you. Then I have all my brushes and combs, or at least the ones that I use mostly. And then I have snap on comb, guard combs. So above that, I have a lot of my cordless clippers that were charged, and I'll show you where I charge them, sitting out on, on the counter and ready for me to use, which is handy. And it doesn't take them too long to charge, which is pretty cool. Okay, click the button, Amy. All right, so here's my blade drawer. L Groomer's Choice also has really nice little blade caddies. That's where I got this one. You can hang them on the wall if you want to. Or in my case, it fit perfectly in my drawer. So I put my blade caddy in my drawer and then I have other clipper blades on a little silicone rubber mat. There's many different silicone rubber mats you can purchase to keep things from sliding around. I don't want my blades sliding around in the drawer. Um, and I did link a really inexpensive silicone mat for you guys. They're handy to have for multi reasons when you're grooming. Lay your shears on, lay your blades on, whatever. So I link that for you in the description below, but that's why that's in the drawer to keep my blades from sliding around. And then of course I have in the back there, you know, all my other blades that are on standby. So if I doll out a seven blade, I grab a seven blade, a new seven blade or a 30 or a 10 or whatever. So those are my spare blades. They're all in one drawer. And I really like that. I never had that before. The middle drawer is my brushes. So that it's all my brushes and combs that are going to address any coat type whether it's a short haired breed, whether it's a shedding breed, or whether it's a poodle or a scissor coat. So all my brushes, my favorite awesome brushes and combs are right here in the middle drawer for me. So as I'm getting ready to groom a dog, I can use that awesome beautiful black granite countertop to lay out my tools and say, okay, I'm gonna want this brush, I'm gonna want that comb, I'm gonna want um, this clipper, whatever, and get all ready for the groom so everything's ready for that particular dog when I start working with them. And then in the last drawer is all my guard combs, basically. So I have guard combs for my five-in-one clippers, for standard size blades, for wide blades. Um, it's all in here. So it's all in one drawer, very convenient. And there again, when I get ready to groom a dog, I can easily just pick out the guard combs I want to use for that groom lay them up here on my black counter and get everything ready for when it's go time with that dog. So I just love all the counter space and the cabinets. Now in this cabinet, this is my clipper cabinet. It's also my clipper charging station cabinet, which is very important. So I chose to have my clippers in a cabinet instead of all out on top of my uh, grooming area because if I'm de-shedding a big dog, the hair is going to get everywhere. I'm trying to keep things clean. So I uh, have a closer picture. Here we go. So I have a really nice trip light power surge there, power surger. So all the different cords that I would need to charge, whether it be a Wall KM10, um, the Joyzy Hornet, the Joyzy Piranha, the Mini, um, the Flash, the Kenchi Flash 5, whatever. They're all here. So when I need to charge one, I can simply just put it on the charger, close the doors, it's protected, it's not gonna get hair all over it, and I can turn that power switch on and off by using the switch, which is nice. 
So we all know that there are lithium ion batteries inside of many of our clippers, right guys? And we all read the news and see that a lot of things that contain lithium ion batteries are cause, starting to catch on fire, <laughs> which is a concern. So, I mean, I feel very confident in our, in our dog grooming manufacturers that are making these clippers for us, especially these reputable brands such as Kenchi, Wall, Joy Z, I feel good that they have really good batteries in there and I'm not to worry about this, but I do not leave this charging overnight and I don't need to because these clippers charge up so fast and they hold a charge for a long time. So I charge them while I'm in here. That's just me and that's what I suggest for safety for you guys is to not charge them and leave your facility you just never know with lithium ion batteries and it seems like everything contains that these these days so um, just be careful and then right below that is where I keep my corded clippers and all my clipper parts so there on the left is my blade drives that I'll be replacing from time to time my blade hinges my screwdrivers um, my clipper grease extra cords, extra extra clipper oil, extra thing. This is all going in this cabinet. So that is dedicated to those things. In the middle cabinet, now I got these little awesome little cheap containers from Amazon and I've linked them for you below. I've used them in several different places of my salon. So they are very nice because like in this case, I have all my de-shedding tools right here on the right. So any, or I'm sorry, those are carding tools on the all the way on the right they're in one basket one little bin and another bin is any de-shedding rakes if i use them which is rare i usually use them more for dematting than anything but all my de-shedding rakes because i have so many i put them all in one basket and all the way to the left are my safe and favorite de-shedding tools all in one basket so it's nice to have those little baskets and I encourage you guys to do that where you can separate things into categories for grooming. You know, that you can have your brushes or your combs in a basket. You can have your de-shedding tools. You can have maybe even blades. You can have your blades or your guard combs or something like that, bows, you name it. So I love having these little baskets. They certainly came in handy for me. So in the one pantry, it's not full yet, but I have a lot of my cleaning supplies and stuff near the bottom. And I have um, gallons of shampoos, conditioners, stuff like that um, in the top. I don't have all my product loaded into these pantries yet. I, I got sick last week and I kind of pooped down on this project of <laughs> loading up all my shampoos, but I have most of it in. Um, so I'll show you what I do with the top cabinets that are near the ceiling that I never could reach or I have to get a little step stool to reach. Um, I'll show you in a minute. This is the other pantry side. So in here I keep a lot of other things like extra grooming towels, extra absorber towels, um, e-collars if need be. Some of my cleaning, you, um, their attachments for my hair vac system if I'm going to use it as a cleaning vac. Um, do dryers, uh, my Sherm Bowel spare dryers in there. A lot of my grooming sprays, colognes, stuff like that, I, they're all in here. Happy hoodies. There's a lot of little things in here. Um, any type of uh, restraints or anything, they're, they're right there in that same shelf where the happy hoodies are. It's all together. So it, I just love the pantries so much. But here, in the very, very tippy top, which is so... Oh, you can't see in that picture. Okay. In the very top is, is, is two cabinets that are all the way at the ceiling. I can't reach them I have to get a ladder so but the nice thing about them is it's still a storage space and I go get my little two-step step ladder I can reach up there I have my little bin for if I use that little bin for when I groom puppies I put them in that in the tub so they feel a little like they're not in this huge dog grooming tub and they're just little tiny baby puppies I bathe them in this little it is a baby basin is what it is for washing up little baby. So I, I have that up there because um, I don't use it often. I don't often groom baby puppies. So not anymore. I used to. Um, so I don't, it isn't a daily occurrence for me. Let's just say that. So that's up there. Uh, my very large, extra large e-collar is up there, which I won't be using that very much at all because I don't groom a lot of extra large dogs, but it's there if I need it. And it's out of the way and it's not taking up good cabinet space that I would use on a daily basis. 
And here in the top here, I wanted to show you guys this very important. Keep your clipper boxes when you buy a clipper. You never know when you may need to send it out for repair and it's already perfect and ready for you to package your clipper in safely to be sent out. So I always keep my clipper boxes. Obviously it's not something I'm gonna go for very often. Hopefully I'm not sending clippers for repair often. So that's going up here in these top cabinets that I won't be getting into very often. And I also keep all my shear boxes up here because when I send them for sharpening, I'm going to need the boxes because that is the safest way to send, to package your shears for sharpening. So I put that stuff all the way at the way, way, wee, wee top to get it out of the way. And there is a straight on view of my hair vac system. Um, I've had that system for years and I love it. I use it more now than ever as just a cleaning and like, like a, um, oh, what is it called? A central vac system to clean my whole shop. That hose will reach anywhere in my shop. So I use it more for that now because since I've been making grooming instructional videos for you guys, I found that for one, not many people are going to be using a hair vac system. So for me to demonstrate dog grooming to you using a hair vac system is kind of unfair. That's why I don't use it in my videos. Another reason is because it, uh, it's kind of in the way where I'm trying to show you how to use your clipper, how to do this and that. You know, the hair back system has an attachment to the clipper itself and I feel like it is in ways obstructing your view of the video. So I don't, you won't see me using it much in videos. Perhaps I'll do this for you. I'll make a video on the hair back system, but it takes a lot to make videos and for me to make a video that is not going to appeal to many people is almost a waste of time. That's why I haven't made the video yet for the hair back system because I don't feel that it would benefit many people. And here's an example of how I can use my TV to help you guys when I'm doing a video or what, whatever. And this is the last thing I'm going to show you. This is our water softening system. Now this is the water softening and bacteria killer and pH balancer system for our whole house. But I have to have something in place for grooming dogs. Absolutely. We have well water. Even if you don't have well water and you have city water, I found a really good option for you guys. And I linked it in the description below to just soften your water a little bit because it actually makes your shampoo and your conditioner work better for you. And it makes it rinse better for you when you have softer water. So it's very beneficial to use a filter. So I linked something for you in the description below of a, a nice little inexpensive alternative to a water softening system if you you know are grooming in a salon or a room area where you don't have a water softening system um, that's going to help your water it purify your water a little bit so your shampoo and conditioner works much better for you and for the dog especially um, it's better for them so it's it's just an rv um, actually alex and i had one when we used to camp and we sold our camper we sold everything to build this house but plus we just want to be here for a while we don't really want to be camping and doing stuff but it was it's like an rv filter and it's very inexpensive and it can hook onto your water supply or a hose or whatever however your water is hooked up so depending on how your water is hooked up my god i talked a lot tonight so that is my salon in a nutshell i will be doing a video of my salon but just to give you guys a heads up, from now on, I won't be running videos in my live streams because this computer, I don't think it can handle it anymore. I think it needs updated and I'm not ready to spend the money on a brand new MacBook Pro, but I will be, I will do it. So for now, we're not gonna be running videos in my live streams. My videos are gonna be standalone videos on my channel. That's why I was showing you pictures tonight because <laughs> it freezes up. We've already experienced that and it's not fun. So uh, I will be making a video of a shop salon tour and giving you, you know, the, the quick, the up close and personal why it is set up the way it's set up. So that'll be coming for you. I'll have many videos in the makings. And now I'm going to get to some of your questions real quick. It is almost seven. We've been here an hour and a half and I know you guys got to eat. You got to take care of your dogs. You got to do things. 
I'm just going to answer. I'm going to pick out a couple of them. Lee and Mandy said, could you please tell me what you use that tear, what you use for tear stains on Morkies? Sure I can, Lee and Mandy. There really isn't a solution for tear stains. Once it's stained, it's stained. But what you can do, obviously keep it clean. If you're allowing it to build up, it's going to stain. I use the facial, puppy facial shampoos around that area and a gentle flea comb to work, slough off some of the nasty stuff that builds up and then causes the staining at our puppy's eyes. So that's one thing you can do is keep it cleaner and then after it, those stains grow out, maybe you'll be on top of it and the staining will be less. Another thing is better diet. Believe it or not, when what dogs eat can affect things like that can affect their skin, can affect their skin to be itchy, can affect them to have allergies, can ex affect their ears to become itchy. So consider maybe a diet change, um, a healthy diet change, something more healthy. Obviously, you know I can offer you a free two-week free trial uh, box for your dogs, multiple dogs if need be, of the farmer's dog fresh food, which fresh food is, is just no preservatives. It's it's good for them. It's really good for them. If your dog's finicky, you'll find they have no problem eating the farmer's dog. So if you want to try that, Lee and Mandy, and see if you notice any benefits after two weeks of feeding the farmer's dog, you may. And that may be the, the ticket for you. But some dogs are just genetically prone to have tear staining. It has something to do with the chemistry of the enzymes that their liver produces or their pancreas or something. I'm not a doctor. But... Uh, it, some dogs, unfortunately, they just suffer from it all the time. And it's unfortunate. And Jean says, what is the blue pad on your grooming table? Good question, because I didn't even say what it was, Jean. Thanks for bringing it up. This is called a paw mat. And you can get paw mats at Groomer's Choice. And basically, remember me telling you you need floor mats for under your feet when you groom? The paw mats are the same type of thing. Um, they're waterproof. You can even use them in the tub if you want to, if, you're, if that makes your dog more comfortable. It's okay to do that. Um, but they, they just cushion their feet and they make it more comfortable for your dog to sit and stand on the table. It's called a paw mat. And you can get them from Groomer's Choice, Jean. They are really, really cool. Did I just get super chatted? Jenny Sutherland super chatted at $9.99. Come on, girlfriend. Save your money now that you're all a student and a scholar now. Jenny's taking the Pet Esthetician Science of the Skin Module 1, and she's loving it. I loved it too, Jenny, but you ain't getting out of here without getting saluted. Thank you, Jenny. You're very supportive. You're always here, and you're so fun. I just love you. And your purple hair. I love hair. You know I love hair. I'm all about hair. I love your purple hair. Thank you, Jenny. You are the sweetest. I really appreciate it. And just jump in a couple more questions. I know I have to let you guys go. It's getting late and I feel really guilt guilty. Restless Soul says, I love using Quicker Slicker, so do I, to brush my cockapoos daily, but it has such a strong smell. I, I can't use it in my house because of my pet birds. Aha, interesting, never thought about that. Any other good options, please? Well, I'll tell you what's better than nothing, Restless Soul, if you're having trouble with, uh, if it's the smell, there's not many detangling products that don't have some type of a scent. But what you can do is put warm water in a spray bottle. It's the idea of just dampening the coat slightly that adds a little more elasticity to the hair and allows you to brush them out easier. Try it. So just warm water, it's okay to do that. Um, so maybe that, would, maybe that would take care of that problem for your restless soul. When I hear you about the pet birds, they can be very sensitive. So and anybody else in here that has birds that may not have thought about that, see, now that you can think about that because of our friend restless soul. Thank you for reminding us that our birds don't like that stuff. <laughs> and birds don't like that stuff. Lois says, Amy, your new salon is awesome. You deserve it, girl. Oh, thank you so much. So enjoy all, all enjoy it all you can. I will. I will. And you guys are going to enjoy it too because you're going to be 
grooming in here with me through all my videos so I'm anxious for you guys to actually see it on a video and see you know how it looks is, is the lighting better is, is having a neutral backdrop better you know I feel like it should be I'm hoping so I'm just gonna scroll a couple more here and see you guys always have the best questions but I gotta let you go it is getting late and I feel very guilt guilty 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 okay uh one more I'll take I see a couple I'm so glad you guys are here tonight. Janelle, Janelle reminded everybody, thank you, Janelle. She says, put a line, hold the dash bar. So Amy sees your question, absolutely. What would we do without each other here in this Go Groomer community? All right, so I saw one other question. Um, Jean, Jean says, what is the max size of the dog that you can fit in your tub? I've had a Great Dane in the tub. There's no, um, any size dog can fit in my tub, any size. Um, some dogs are gonna have a little less space to move around in than others, like a Great Dane or a, a deer hound. <laughs> Never groomed one of those, but I'd like to get one in that tub someday. Um, so, and the riser comes out. So for my bigger dogs, you know, they're just standing on the lower riser. If I'm working with a smaller dog or even a small to medium size, I'll put the riser in my tub, which brings them up a little and lets the water fall down over them. But they're more up to an eye level where I can work better with them. I have never, there is no size limit. There's no weight limit. Um, I've had Newfoundlands in there. Any size dog in that TriStar Vet tub with the swivel ramp, it's a great tub. You can't go wrong. So I'm glad you asked the question because, you know, people may think, is there a size capacity, you know, because if you're looking for a tub, you may, you don't want to find that out after you have one installed. So guys, if you haven't signed up for my weekly dog grooming newsletter, there's a link for it below. It's free and I share some awesome dog grooming tips and tricks for you every Friday at eight o'clock. It comes right into your email in bin from me to you. So please sign up for it. It's very, very helpful. Very helpful. People are loving it. Um, it's in the description below. Channel members, hounds, anybody there with a badge beside your name, you are a hound. You are my hound. And you're a channel member. So for $4.99, my channel members get a weekly, or I'm sorry, a monthly learning session with me with uh, printable downloadable notes of our session, not just typed out notes, pictures. It's like little workbooks, um, kind of, little lessons. But we're getting together this Sunday, Hounds. I can't wait to see you. We are scheduled to get together this Sunday, March, third at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So any of you hounds, or if you want to join as a hound, click the join button. It's right there for you. We're getting together at 12 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, March 3rd, this Sunday. And the topic that we're discussing and we're learning about in our hound group this month is the difference between blending shears and which ones to use for various tasks when grooming dogs. <laughs> Great topic. Okay, can't wait for that one. If you're not a channel member a member, and you would love to take your dog grooming knowledge to a new level, there's a link in the description of this video where you can become a channel member, a hound um, of my channel. So you get those learning sessions and have access to those specific learning videos that nobody else does. And they're all on a playlist. Plus there's many other videos on my channel that are for members only. So that is what you get if you're a channel member. It's four dollars and ninety-nine cents a month, which costs is the cost of a cup of coffee. I wish I would have had that option when I was learning to groom for four dollars and ninety-nine cents. Our next live from the grooming table is scheduled for Monday, March eleventh, at five thirty p.m. Eastern Standard Time. The topic is: Are you ready? You're gonna love this one. But first. Alexa, please set a reminder for Monday, March 11th at 5.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Gold Groomer is live on YouTube. Thank you, Alexa. I did that for you. How many of your Alexas are going off right now? Please tell me. <laughs> I can't stop. I have to do it now at the end of every live stream. I love it, love it, love it. I love making your Alexa talk. Okay. 
anyway, let me know. Did your Alexa, did she hear me? <laughs> okay, what is the topic when we get together next in two weeks? Here, live from the grooming table, just like tonight. The topic is, what is the difference between all the different dog clippers on the market today and when to use each one? You guys, you know why I chose this topic? Because I get a lot of comments and emails. You guys are confused and I understand. I understand. I'm going to try to fix that for you. Do you really need an A5 style detachable blade clipper? Or can you do it all with a 5-in-1 adjustable blade dog clipper? You want to know? And you show up here in two weeks, I'll tell you. What about those tiny little trimmers? Do you need one? And when would you use it? What can you use it for? I've got you covered on all these clipper types, my friends. I'm going to show you up close and personal, and I'm going to, I'm going to break it all down. I'm definitely going to break it all down, and I'm going to break it apart to tear down the walls so you guys really understand. I'm going to tear it down for you so you truly, truly do understand the capabilities and the inadequacies of each clipper. There are some inadequacies, inadequacies and some capabilities of each clipper, and I'm going to share it with you. So now is time in closing for me to share the Farmer's Dog Super Bowl commercial with you that touched lives all over the world on Super Bowl Sunday two years ago. It is an awesome commercial, but more than anything, guys, I have decided to team up with the Farmer's Dog so I can offer you a two-week free supply of the Farmer's Dog food for your pet to try and see all the many benefits from feeding fresh whole food delivered straight to your door. If you would like to try a free two week supply of the farmer's dog food for your dogs, plural, there's a link in the description below. Guess what guys, I'm gonna see you in two weeks. Hounds, I'm gonna see you in a couple days on Sunday. I love you guys. I appreciate you coming in and touring my grooming salon with me today. More than anything, I appreciate what you are doing for your pets and the pets you groom. You're really up in your game. You're learning as much as you can, and you're proving it every day. I'm so proud of all of you guys. Just stay patient. Keep, keep improving. Dog grooming is something. Every time you groom a dog, you're going to improve with every single groom. Don't forget it. So I love you guys. Hey, guess what? Long live dogs. Let's not do that again, okay? Don't worry, dog, about the rest of our lives. Through the thick and thin, I'll be there by your side. Cause when I see those big, beautiful eyes looking into my Whatever. <laughs>